history repeats itself again. Never again means never again for everyone. Yet, here we go again. We found ourselves supporting genocides, wars, and ethnic cleansing. Imagine the year is 1935. Would you support Hitler's lunatic plans? Watch this. Meine Arbeit für Richtigkeit, ob du glaubst, dass ich fleißig gewesen bin, dass ich gearbeitet habe, dass ich mich in diesen Jahren für dich eingesetzt habe, dass ich anständig meine Zeit verwendet habe im Dienste meines Volkes. Gib du jetzt deine Stimme ab. Wenn ja, dann tritt für mich ein, so wie ich für dich eingetreten bin. Yet, we are doing the same exact thing by supporting Netanyahu to kill children. This is not an honor given to Netanyahu by the U.S. Congress. This is the U.S. Congress obeying the commands of the man who leads the nation that owns the U.S. Congress. Might as well call him Netanyahu, the President of the United States of America. Listen to Scott Ritter former U.S. Marine Corps intelligence officer and his take on Netanyahu's disgraceful speech at the Congress. Well, first of all, we need to set the stage. Uh, this isn't so much the U.S. Congress inviting the Israeli Prime Minister to speak, but the Israeli Prime Minister uh, calling in uh, the duties and responsibilities of the Congress that Israel has bought and paid for over the years. We just had a primary election season in the United States where every single candidate that was backed by the pro-Israeli lobby, APAC, uh, won because of the money that was put on the table. Israel has bragged about buying you at the U.S. Congress. And this is the result where a war criminal, a man who has been accused uh, of genocide, who has arrest warrants being prepared for him by the International Court of Justice, a man who uh, heads a state that has been defined legally as an apartheid state, uh, carrying out an illegal and unjust occupation and, again, genocide of the Palestinian people, um, has demanded an audience to the Congress that he has bought and paid for. That's what's happening here. We must see it in that perspective. This isn't an honor being given to Netanyahu by the U.S. Congress. This is the U.S. Congress obeying the commands of the man uh, who leads the nation that owns the U.S. Congress. And they own the White House as well. They own the president. Um, they own both candidates for president. This is the sad reality of the uh, political situation in the United States today. We don't act as a sovereign nation. We act basically as an extension of this genocidal entity known as Israel. Exactly. Netanyahu has bought the Congress. He's playing to a paid audience. He's paid these people to sit on their seats and cheer him. And he's paid them very well that the head of the U.S. Congress, the Speaker of the House, Mr. Johnson, has threatened to arrest people of Congress and charge them should they disrupt the scripted scene that's going to take place where there will be more standing ovations than previously. That the idea is to show not just to Netanyahu, because again, he wrote the script. This is something he said, it has to happen. This is played out for the Israeli people. This is Netanyahu coming. He's been beaten in Gaza. He's been humiliated. He's coming here to have the American flag wrapped around him, to be anointed, basically, by the American Congress so that he can go back to Israel and say, see, the American or America is fully behind me. I have the backing of the United States during these difficult times. This is an act of political desperation on the part of Netanyahu because his military is broken and he is in open rebellion. That's the reality. Netanyahu cannot take that to the Israeli people. So instead, he came here as an active grand political theater and that's what he was all about. The U.S. literally hosted a leader carrying a genocide. U.S. Congress applauded a man wanted for a war crimes, for murdering innocent babies, children, women, and men by indiscriminate 
bombs, drones, snipers, and enforced starvation. This is exactly what Hitler did. Over 55 standing ovations, the most in American history. No American president ever got this standing ovations ever. APAC owns all these Congress members, hence the clapping. We are living in the worst Black Mirror episode ever. They didn't just listen to him. They gave him a standing ovation, unlike anything before. The number of times the audience broke into this enthusiastic applause is sickening. This is how democracy is traded for money. And that was the most disturbing because for those of us who have followed the live televised genocide for 292 days, we have understood the blatant lies that Israel and its apologists have made. But to watch the U.S. Congress jubilantly cheer and scramble over one another in order to cheer for essentially what is a war on children when Netanyahu says they want to finish the job. The job is annihilation. It is extermination. It is genocide. It has flattened all of Gaza. And there is now a humanitarian crisis, including a spread of polio and skin disease, spreading among tens of thousands of children in Gaza, linked to unknown agents Israel used in bombs. And the U.S. Congress is applauding for this, jubilantly, and at one point, breaking out into a chant of USA, USA, USA. So as I watched what it occurred, to me, this is exactly what people who supported Hitler did. These applauds and chants echo an entitlement to kill, an entitlement to destroy the lives that are not seen or deemed worthy, where racism and colonialism is not a dog whistle, but is on full display. So for those who are concerned about saving their democracy at home, I have some news for you. There is no democracy to save that manifests itself in an ongoing genocide in this way. Consider your fellow Palestinian Americans. Arab Americans and your fellow American Muslims have been subject to fascist regime at home already. Not only in being forced to watch a genocide, which we are punished for naming and talking about, but also to have anti-terrorism act being leveled against those of, of us who are protesting U.S. policy, who are entreating the United States to follow its own law, the National Security Memorandum Number 20, the Arms Export Control Act, the lay amendment insisting that the U.S. cannot continue even at the bare minimum to transfer arms to an apartheid state a belligerent state that is violating U.S. and international law. Yet, Netanyahu has more power in the United States than all these clapping puppets. This is a sign that America is falling morally. To members of Congress and senators in Washington, to my fellow Americans and to the world, how do you find how do you find it in yourself to applaud a man who was indicted of war crimes? How can you celebrate him as a very dear guest, an ally, when you know for sure that the number of innocent victims in Gaza is nearly 50,000 in less than a year, and more than half of them are women and children? Where is your humanity? Where are all those human values and democracy that you talk about? Do you really care about your fellow human beings? Do you really know the meaning of love, justice, and empathy? Do you ever think of the oppressed people of Palestine whose land, freedom, and right to security and dignity have been robbed? And do you genuinely still plan to lecture the entire world on democracy and human rights? 
or just because it's not happening in your backyard, it doesn't matter. How will you stand before God the Almighty on the day of justice? That day will come sooner or later.